Welcome to Shep Rambles. I am Shep, and I tend to ramble about what? Anything and everything. And this time we're going to talk and ramble about uh, the possibility of an R-rated Star Trek. What are your thoughts about it? <clears throat> well, I've got an article here right on my screen, as you can see, about uh, Quentin Tarantino. Um making a Star Trek movie, and you can see that it says Quentin Tarantino's Star Trek movie, meaning uh, it's happening. Not that he wants to make one, it's that he is making one. And if you don't know who Quentin Tarantino is, where you been? <laughs> Quentin, Quentin Tarantino has made uh, the movie's Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, uh, Kill Bill, and several other movies. He doesn't do PG movies. He doesn't do PG-13 movies. He really pushes the envelope with his stuff. And so, if he's doing a Star Trek, you can better believe he's going to push the envelope on it, just like his other films. Now... Your first thoughts are probably, because that's not what Star Trek is. Star Trek is a family show. And I would agree. I, I would completely agree with you on that. Um, but if you haven't seen the new show Star Trek Discovery, they've been pushing the envelope on that. It's not technically R-rated, but they have dropped an F-bomb in there, and there have been some very edgy scenes in there that are that makes the show less than family-friendly. It's an interesting take on Star Trek, I'll say that, but it's not like the classic shows. And when I say classic, I don't mean like the classic Star Trek with Kirk. I'm talking like The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, and Voyager, and Enterprise. I'm talking about those classics, where you could sit down with your family and watch them. Discovery is not like that. Um, and this Quentin, Quentin Tarantino Star Trek movie is probably not going to be like that either. So I have not read this article, so let's go through it together. So he's making a Star Trek movie. That's a sentence fans of the franchise never thought they would read, as Tarantino brand doesn't exactly seem like it would fit with Star Trek. But Tarantino himself, he loves Star Trek. In fact, he has gone on record as saying that there's one episode of the show that he would love to turn into a two-hour film. And looking at the episode gives us a good idea of what he's got cooking. So here's the Star Trek episode that Tarantino will likely draw inspiration from for his new movie. If this Tarantino Star Trek movie doesn't... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, if it happens. So, well, see, now it says if it happens. It, it, here it's talking about he's making one, and then it's like, if it, <laughs> if it happens. He wouldn't be writing the screenplay, he'd just be directing. However, that doesn't mean that he's not involved in the story at all. So apparently Tarantino came up with the idea for the new movie, and he pitched it to J.J. Abrams. Oh, no. <laughs> Not J.J. Abrams, please. He's already been making a mess of, of Star Wars, and if you're a J.J. Abrams fan, I'm, you know, no offense or anything like that. Um, with the reboot Star Treks, I'll, I'll tell you this. I thought the first movie was... Uh, an interesting direction. Um, at least it was explained as a alternate universe. And so I was okay with that. And then the second one was like the Wrath of Khan all over again, just with a different spin. Why? 
it started off interesting because it was about a renegade Starfleet officer. I thought that was interesting. And then it turned into Khan. Why? Why, why, why? That was my big question. I was liking everything until that point. Uh, but the third movie I liked. The third, I didn't expect much out of the third movie. But the third movie felt more like Star Trek than the other two movies. I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't have any of the Star Trek uh, movies on DVD or Blu-ray. Uh, but if if I were to, and I mean the newer ones, but if I were going to, I would definitely buy the third one. Um, the third one actually kind of stands by itself. It doesn't need the second one. And you kind of don't need the first one unless you want an explanation of why things look different. But other than that, I thought the third one was good. So, um... But he, and J.J. Abrams had nothing to do with it, so there you go. <laughs> I guess I rest my case. I don't like what he's done with Star Wars. I think he had some great ideas for The Force Awakens, even though it was kind of a rehash of A New Hope. Um, and then The Last Jedi was a complete mess, which J.J. Abrams didn't have anything to do with it. He was kind of like, here, Ryan Johnson, I trust you. You'll do a great job. It's like... Hey, my name's Ryan Johnson, and I'm a I, I'm a stud, man. And I'm gonna take all your ideas and throw them out and do my own thing. Thanks, Ryan. Did an awesome job. Not out of out of a three movie trilogy, the second movie was anything but. The second movie was kind of like let's throw everything out and do our own thing and then it ends as if it ends as if it's the third movie like it's it's like it's tying up everything i mean you come out of the second movie thinking what am i supposed to look forward to in the third movie that's how i felt anyway okay so we're rambling and getting off of the whole star trek thing but anyway um so they liked quentin Tarn Tarantino's concept so much that they immediately began to assemble in the writer's room to put together a screenplay. So if he's pitching at the J.J. Abrams, then I'm thinking this is going to be in the J.J. verse. I don't like calling it the J.J. verse. Um, I know it's got that nickname. I prefer calling it by its uh, title, the Kelvin Timeline. So... The movie might not be chock full of Tarantino isms, as you'd expect, considering it'd be the first film he directs without also writing. Still, the thrust of the movie comes from his brain. The film is also rumored to have an R rating, duh. Although Simon, Simon Pegg has suggested this may not be the case. Well, you know, this can go two different ways. For a Quentin Tarantino movie, fans of Quentin Tarantino are going to expect an R rated movie. They're going to say they're not going to want to go to a family-friendly Quentin Tarantino movie. That's one thing. There, I mean, you're boy. This is going to be this is going to be controversial. If this movie comes out, it's going to be so controversial because you're going to have your Quentin Tarantino fans that are looking for a hard edge Star Trek movie with blood, guts, gore, language, you know, all that stuff the people that are really into that and want to see Star Trek taken to this really ed the, this deep edge then you're going to have your your hardcore Star Trek fans that aren't going to want anything to do with it and we're like hey this is not what Star Trek is um, and the fact that it's R rated is going to it's going to limit your audience so anyone with families are going to be like I don't want anything to do with it but you know what? And I can't speak for Quentin Tarantino. Okay, I can't speak for him. I mean, he does love Star Trek. But he strikes me as the type of person that said, that doesn't care what people think. And, I don't know, kudos to him. He sticks, he sticks to his guns. He says, you know, this is me. This is how I do things. If you don't like it, go watch something else. 
you know, he he does what he does, and he gains his fans by staying consistent with his style. And I respect him for that. And I've I've seen some of his movies, and he definitely has a very artistic vision on on what he does. Um. Although I think it would be interesting to see Quentin Tarantino do a PG thirteen movie. Um, create creatively, it'll be interesting to see how he works within that 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 lim- those limits. Um, I don't know. I I just this is going to be so controversial. I can I can just see it. Okay, so. Just over two years ago, Tarantino was interviewed on the Nerdist podcast, and a listener asked him whether he'd ever want to direct a Star Wars movie, and Star Wars came up because the interview took place right after The Force Awakens, and Tarantino said he liked Star Wars, but that if he were ever to make a movie like this, he'd prefer it to be Star Trek. He says, I'm definitely a fan of the original series, in particular a fan of William Shatner, that's my key into this series is William Shatner. Does that mean does that mean that William Shatner is going to be in it? <laughs> that would be sweet. That'd be so awesome. Um, at the time, Tarantino also said that he actually thought about doing a Star Trek movie before and even mold over an idea for it. Hmm. I've heard I've heard this before with the gate of. This is like something people have been talking about, you know, as far as, as what the what they did with the Star Trek movies before. Why didn't they do something with the the, the Gate of Forever? Or is it tomorrow? I can't remember. During that same podcast interview, Tarantino went on to say that some of the classic episodes of the show are so good they deserve a film treatment. I agree. And this is one of them. Some of those episodes are fantastic, and the only thing that limited them was their 60s budget and 8-day shooting schedule. You could take some of the great classic Star Trek episodes and easily expand them to 90 minutes or more and really do some amazing, amazing stuff. Um, One example is Space Seed with Khan right there. There's your perfect example. Um, Some of the other examples I can think of is when they went to the uh, planet... uh, where the prime directive was was completely violated and the military there became was nazi turned into a nazi regime um you could really do something with that i mean yeah i totally agree there's so many classic episodes they they could have turned into movies the doomsday machine for crying out loud the mirror universe mirror mirror those are prime episodes right there that could easily be turned into movies and they didn't why well they wanted to do something new i get that but hey it worked for wrath of khan imagine if they had done a movie on the doomsday machine or done a movie about the terran empire holy crap i mean that could have easily done better than the wrath of khan but they didn't, so it it is what it is. Tarantino then said, "You want to if Tarantino did a Mirror Universe episode, because you want to talk about something that's gritty, since they're evil. That would be the perfect. That's the perfect movie for Quentin Tarantino to do. That's that's perfect subject matter." Because that, because Quentin Tino Tino with 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 how he does R-rated stuff, that would be a complete opposite to what we know and love as as classic Trek. So if he were to do that, that would to- I think a lot of people would be ex- ex- acceptable with that because it would it's a complete mirror. It, it would it would definitely be a complete uh, mirror from what we know. Quentin Tarantino, if you're listening to me, Mirror Universe, you can't lose, all right? Whatever you got planned, 
Terran Empire, Mirror Universe, you won't go wrong. A lot of people are asking for it, have asked for it. You don't need to do a crossover from the Prime Timeline, Kelvin Timeline, whatever, into the Mirror Universe. Just do a movie that's specifically in the Mirror Universe. And I guarantee you that movie is going to sell like nuts. Whether, whether it's people who are fans of your movies or fans of Star Trek, it's going to sell. Hear me out, man. I'm telling you, that's what you want to do. All right, so he said uh, one episode everyone would think of to remake would be The City on the Edge of Forever. That's the, um, well, that's the episode where McCoy goes back in time to the 1930s, alters the president. Um, so... If you haven't watched the classic Star Trek episodes, what's wrong with you? <laughs> For one, don't give me this excuse that the, uh, well, the graphics are kind of dated, blah, blah. They redid the graphics, okay? All right, you don't have to watch. I don't know. I think it's hard-pressed to see the Star Trek with the old graphics anymore. And although that's the Trek that I grew up with, I will... I'll flat, I'll tell you right now that I would never want to see Star Trek with those old graphics ever again, because what they did for the new graphics really makes it, they did a fantastic job with it. It doesn't look out of place. It looks, it looks like it, it, it belongs with the show. It looks exactly if they, if they were to do the show today, as far as graphics, if they had the, if they had the money not the money, but if they had the technology then that we have now, that's how it would have looked, I think. So I think they did a fantastic job. Um, but yeah, go back and watch the classic series, especially the these key episodes like this one, Trouble of Tribbles, Mirror Mirror, Doomsday Machine. Go watch them. You know, do yourself a favor. It's on Netflix, all right? Um, it's on Hulu, too. Um, and yeah, and it's a great time travel story. So, however, that's not the episode that Tarantino focused on. There's one from The Next Generation that sounds like it truly inspired his movie idea. The Borg? I don't know. Let's find out. But that's already been done. Ah, okay. Yesterday's Enterprise... Yeah, where everything hit. That's another good one. Where history changed. Tarantino named one particular episode as being one of the best ever written. Next to the Borg, yes, Yesterday's Enterprise from the Next Generation Season 3. In that episode, the USS Enterprise C travels through time and inadvertently alters history. As a result, a war between the Klingons and the United Federation of Planets is now underway. Yeah, that's a very good one. And also, in case you are, in case you love this story, it's continued uh, in a form on Star Trek Online because obviously things go back to the way they were because the Enterprise C is sent back. Well, it doesn't go back to its original time right away. Something else happens in between. But to find out what that is, you would need to play Star Trek Online or at least watch some videos on it. And there is a argument, um, and I think it's a fair argument, that the material that's in Star Trek Online is actually canon. And the reason is because it has to go through CBS. Um, every, all of it's going through CBS to get approved, and that makes it canon, at least for now. So, and considering they get all the original actors to come back and, and they've, they've done such a great job with the game and the stories as far as intertwining them with the different series, including the Kelvin timeline, I, I think they've done a fantastic job. But uh, here we see, we find out that the Enterprise C originally went down uh, protecting Klingons, and because of this, the Klingons never went to war with the Federation. But when in a when a rift in space-time brings the Enterprise C ahead, 
it prevents that from happening and so there winds up being a war with the uh, Klingons so the only way to prevent that is to send the Enterprise C back in time basically to die so he says I actually think that is one of the great not only space stories but the way it dealt with the mythology of the whole thing that actually could bear a two-hour treatment Then we got the movie version here. The podcast appearance ended before Tarantino had a chance to explain what his take on yesterday's Enterprise would be. Presumably his movie wouldn't just be a direct remake of that episode, but it sounds like that's the episode he would draw the most inspiration from. And looking at this uh, picture of Spock, Spock and Kirk, and Zachary Quinton was awesome, I just, I gotta tell you. Out of all the characters, he is like so dead on with Spock. He he does such an awesome job. I always see him as Siler, though. <laughs> I always see him. I I kept ex I keep expecting Spock to go like this. <laughs> Cut people's heads off. Um. It's worth noting that Tarantino only mentioned two episodes: "The City on Edge of Forever" and "Yesterday's Enterprise." I can see how that might be tied together. He didn't end up explaining why he used those as, as examples when he asked what he wanted his Star Trek movie to be, but they both involve characters making a difficult decision after the timeline is messed up. Which gets you wondering, if this is this about fixing the Kelvin timeline and bringing everything back to how it was? Well, I mean, according to J.J. Abrams, the prime timeline still exists. It just split off. And according to Star Trek Online, that's true. The prime prime timeline still does exist, and Spock is actually missing from it. So, like I said, the story the stories are great in Star Trek Online. Um, in the city of uh, Ezra Forever, the reason history changes is because McCoy saves a woman named Edith Keeler, and her survival caused a sequence of events that leads to the Nazis to win World War II. There's another rumor that that's how the Terran Empire in the Mirror Universe got created. That it was spawned off of that, which I think that's an interesting thought. So Spock and Kirk must allow her to die in order to save millions. With yesterday's Enterprise, all those aboard the Enterprise C must be allowed to die in order to prevent a war. It seems like no coincidence Tarantino pulled out two episodes that deal with this very specific theme. So his movie idea at the time of the podcast appearance, it seems probably had something to do with time travel and making a difficult decision in order to make the timeline right. And my cat is meowing. Interestingly, <laughs> interestingly before Tarantino came on board, the new Star Trek movie was already going to be about time travel. Um, variety reported back in 2016 that the fourth film in the new series would co-star Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth played James Kirk's father who died in the opening scene of 2009 Star Trek which is on the Kelvin, USS Kelvin, which caused it to the timeline to split up. So the only way he would be returning to star opposite Pine would be via time travel. Paramount announced in 2016 that in the new movie, Pine's Captain Kirk will cross paths with a man he never had a chance to meet, but whose legacy has haunted him since the day he was born, his father. Presumably, the idea for the new movie has changed now, but it's possible that Hemsworth could still play part in Tarantino's ver vision. Version, whatever. Yeah, he'll come in and, and be uh, Thor. One great theory about the film's plot was posted by Birth Movie's Death. The idea is that the film will basically be Yesterday's Enterprise with a twist. The ship that comes forward in time is actually the ship that James Kirk's father is on when he dies at the beginning of 2009 Star Trek. This could make for moral dilemma in which Kirk, after bonding with his father for the first time, realizes the only way to prevent a war is to send him back in time to his death. But my question is, if his father comes forward into the future, that would prevent the Kelvin from being destroyed, so would it revert 
uh, it would go missing. I don't know. Vulcan would Vulcan would still be destroyed. So yeah, I guess I guess the universe would still be there. Probably just worse. So yeah, he would have to send him back to his death. The movie would therefore deal with the same themes Tarantino has expressed interest in, but with an even greater emotional resonance and would bring the new reboot of fan franchise full circle by revisiting the opening scene of the very first movie. At the same time, it's possible Tarantino's film will simply be another reboot or an alternate timeline story dealing with a new cast. A lot of questions about it remain unanswered, but it seems like a safe bet that the project will explore time travel and its consequences in some way. Time travel movie with Quentin Tarantino, that would be interesting. let say this is what I mean about the <clears throat> controversy. Not everyone is on board with the idea of Tarantino making a Star Trek movie. A choice that's especially controversial is the idea of potentially making the movie R-rated. It doesn't matter now because Star Trek Discovery is already pushing that edge. So it's already pretty much been done. Many fans don't, and it's going for a second season. So there you go. Many fans don't like the idea of taking a property that has always been something that people of all ages can enjoy and which is about themes younger viewers should be exposed to and turning it into something that no one under the age of 17 can go, go and see. Well, they can go and see it. They just have to be with uh, parental guidance. Restricted. Um, uh, you, you have to have a parent go with you. Presumably, the only reason it would get an R rating is that it has hardcore violence, language, or sexuality, which isn't something Star Trek really needs. Well, it's... The violence and the sexuality has already been in the reboot movies, so... Language... Uh, yeah, that's been in there. And like I said, the F-bomb's already been dropped in Star Trek Discovery, so... Plus, Tarantino is someone with a very distinct style. Would he be able to tone that down and produce something that feels like classic Star Trek? Or would this just feel like Tarantino riffing on the genre and almost making fun of it? No, I don't believe that. If Quentin Tarantino loves Star Trek, then I don't think he's going to mock it. I personally, I don't think that's his style at all. Okay, so he got into some hot water about something. So Tarantino has not been having a great couple of months. Been back in October 2017. Uh, okay, this is all a bunch of Harvey Weinstein. I mean, who cares about this? This get this get goes on about uh, stuff that's not related to Star Trek. So uh, you can read this if you want to. Let's see what else is happening. Will it actually happen? Well, I thought he said he was doing it, so I don't know. So not entirely clear if uh, it'll actually happen, both because of how many projects in Hollywood are talked about but never get off the ground. Yeah, that's true. On social media, as soon as Tarantino's comments about Polanski... I see this, and I, I think Pulaski, Dr. Pulaski from the second season of Next Generation. Question for, for you. Who who have you wanted to see more of Dr. Pulaski? I did. Beverly Crusher bored me. She had some good episodes, but overall she bored me. Pulaski was interesting. She was like she was almost like McCoy. She was kinda like, no nonsense, I'm not gonna take your crap. <laughs> I I liked her. I wanted to see more of her. So what do you think? What, I'm curious what you think about that. Um, all right, so there's already been a petition to kick off Tarantino's project, and it's got a thousand thousands of signatures. Um, then there was a project update from Simon Pegg saying it's not very far along. He said that J.J. Abrams is considering putting it into a writing room. Um, Tarantino's now working on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So, blah, blah, blah. 
and we go to next and now it talks about Roseanne Barr okay so that's not what this uh, <laughs> that is not what what this uh, this video is about I don't know if I want to talk about the thing with Roseanne Barr or not anyway um, so there we go so an R-rated Star Trek movie what do you think um, good bad doesn't matter now um, it's uh, it, it obviously Star Trek is is not continuing from Star Trek Nemesis it's now it's now a completely different type of thing um, so I guess I guess you've got two different types of Star Treks that you could follow if you want to follow the Star Trek that you grew up with with Kirk and Picard and Janeway and Cisco then the stories that you want to follow are the ones that are on Star Trek Online. Those are the ones that that take those stories forward. Um, if you're looking for something new and fresh, then you've got the reboot movies and you've got Star Trek Discovery. And I get it. I understand why they did Star Trek Discovery the way they did. They're trying to get a whole new audience. Um, I don't know if going back in time was the way to do that back before Kirk, but like I said, it is what it is. But uh, let me know in your comments what you think about this article. And uh, uh, you know the drill as far as uh, the like and subscribe. Um, not only that, but uh, check out some of these other videos. You can click on on uh, one of these on your screen. Um, I do these videos uh, because... Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm basically I'm opening up and I want to be able to speak to you guys and have a converse, conversation and get your opinions and your feedbacks on what's going on is oh, you know it's conversation you know um, I always like sharing ideas with people you know we may not always agree but you know who's to say we can't have a, a fun conversation so um, don't be afraid. Leave some comments in there. I'm always looking forward to what, what you guys have to say. And in the meantime, um, have yourselves a uh, awesome day, afternoon, weekend, all that fun stuff. And I will see you on the next video.